Microsoft Azure Security and Azure Cost. Two major areas a lot of questions have been coming from in recent times in AZ900 exams. Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. In today's episode 37, we are going to cover real AZ900 exam questions focusing on key areas like Microsoft Defender, which is Azure cutting edge security solution and Azure cost management, especially focusing on data egress and data ingress. Understanding how to optimize costs and maximize efficiency is essential in any cloud deployment. So there will be a lot of learnings and Microsoft documentation to strengthen your Azure learning and be AZ900 certified. Power packed episode is coming up. So let's begin. So here comes the very first question for today. Part 37, question number 701. Question says that Microsoft Defender for Cloud can monitor Azure resources and on-premises resources. Yes or no? And the correct answer, my friends, is yes. So you can use Microsoft Defender to monitor both Azure resources, definitely on cloud and on-premises resources. Moving on with the question number 702, it says all features of Microsoft Defender for cloud are free. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is no. Moving on with the question number 703, it says for Microsoft Defender for Cloud, you can download a regulatory compliance report, yes or no? And most definitely the answer is yes. And now that we have taken some questions on Microsoft Defender, let's understand exactly what is Microsoft Defender. So this is the documentation on Microsoft Defender. You can already know this comes under Microsoft Security. On this documentation, you can read that how Microsoft Defender defend against malicious cyber threats. And who can use Microsoft Defender? Well, enterprises, businesses and individuals. All, everyone can use Microsoft Defender. You can also read and explore Microsoft Defender products for enterprises. For example, we have Microsoft 360 Defender, Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Also, we have Microsoft Defender for Business, Microsoft Defender for Individuals. So I hope you're noting the scope of Microsoft Defender is all across the board. And as always, the link to this documentation is provided in the description box. But I just want to quickly give you one liner on Microsoft Defender for Cloud. So it strengthens your security posture, protect workloads against modern threats and helps develop secure applications. So a very important Microsoft service when it comes to security and threat protection. Now let's move on to the next question. Question number 704 says that adding resource group in an Azure subscriptions generate additional cost. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. And this is because Azure resource groups are logical containers for Azure resources and you do not have to pay anything for resource groups. Question number 705 says that storing 1 TB of data in Azure blob storage will always cost same regardless of Azure regions in which the data is located. Yes or no? And the correct answer my friends is no. And the reason is that price of Azure storage varies by the region. If you use Azure storage pricing page in that documentation, in that page, you can select different regions and see how the price changes per region. So the crux of the matter is that Azure prices for Azure storage varies by the region. So the crux of this question is that Azure storage prices varies by the region. So even if you have one TB of data in various region, the cost will vary according to the region. Question number 706 says that when you use a general purpose version 2 Azure storage account, you are only charged for the amount of data that is stored. All read and write operations are free. Yes or no? And the correct answer is most definitely a no. And the reason my friends is that you are charged for the read and write operations in general purpose version 2 storage accounts. So friends, all these questions, all these concepts around the Azure cost, always keep them in mind. Not only lot of questions come from this area, but also they will be handy when you're actually working on Microsoft Azure. Now let's take few questions on another very important concept around Azure cost and that is data egress and data ingress. So here comes the question number 707. It says copying 10 GB of data to Azure from an on-premises network over VPN generates additional Azure data transfer cost. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is no. 
So let me first introduce you to the Azure Data Egress concept. So data egress in the world of networking or you can say in the world of cloud, it's not only just for Azure, but it also is relevant for AWS and Google GCP. So as I was saying, data egress in the world of networking implies the traffic that exits an entity or a network boundary. So basically data egress is the process of data leaving a network and transferring to an external location. On the other hand, the data ingress is the traffic that enters the boundary of a network. So in very simple words, egress means exiting the cloud and ingress means entering the cloud. Copying 10 GB of data to Azure from on-premises network, which means the data is coming inside Azure cloud. And in this question, we are talking about data ingress. So data ingress over a VPN is the data coming in to Azure from VPN. And you are not charged for the data cost for data egress. I hope you very well understood the concept of data ingress and data egress. Let's move on with the question number 708, a similar question. It says copying 10 GB of data from Azure to an on-premises network over VPN generates additional Azure data transfer cost. Yes or no? And the correct answer this time, my friends, is yes. And why so? Because this time the data is exiting the Azure cloud and reaching the on-premises network. So that's why we're talking about data egress. And now comes question number 709 that says transferring data between Azure storage accounts in different Azure regions is free. Yes or no? And the correct answer is no. So friends, please focus here in case you are transferring data between Azure storage accounts in different Azure regions. In that case, you will be charged for data read operations of the source storage account and write operations in the destination storage account. So friends, in case you're getting confused, please rewind the video, watch the video again, understand the concept, read more documentation from Microsoft so that you are very well prepared on these questions around Azure costs. Now let's move on to the question number 710 that says in Azure Active Directory Premium P2, at least 99.9% .9 availability is guaranteed. Yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. Question number 711 says that service level agreement or SLA for Azure Active Directory Premium P2 is same as the SLA of Azure Active Directory free version. Yes or no? And most definitely this is an incorrect statement. That's why no is the correct answer. Now let's move on to the question number 712. But before we take this question, I want to say you friends, in case you're already feeling well prepared for the AZ 900 exam, please go ahead and attempt the exam. You do not have to wait and watch all the upcoming series. See, it's our duty that we bring the latest questions for the AZ 900 series and other certification. But in case you're already well prepared, please go ahead and attempt your AZ 900. Now let's read this question. It says all the paying Azure customers receive a credit if their monthly uptime percentage is below the guaranteed amount in the service level agreement. Yes or no? And the correct answer, my friends, is yes. So basically, if your uptime percentage dips before the guaranteed amount in the service level agreement, in that situation, you can claim credit if the availability falls below the SLA. So what are the rules around it? The amount of credit depends on the availability. For example, you can claim 25% credit if the availability is less than 99.9% .9 and further, you can claim 50% credit if it's less than 99% and then 100% claim in case is the availability is less than 95%. So keep this important point in mind in case your availability is falling beyond the SLA, you always know there is a credit claim. And now my friends, let's take a different kind of question, a different format, which is a drag and drop kind of question. Question number 713. So in this question, you're given with some of the Azure services on the left hand side. And then you're also given with one line of definition of all these services on this right hand side box, which is the answer area. So what you need to do is, is match these Azure services with these definitions. So what are the Azure services given? So here we have Azure Monitor, Marketplace, Azure Advisor, and Azure SQL Database. Let's read the first definition. It says a managed relational cloud database service. And most definitely this is Azure SQL Database. The second definition says monitor the health of Azure service. So which important service is this? Well, this is Azure Monitor. And then we have browse all virtual 
machine images and this one none other than is Azure Marketplace. And lastly, we have view security recommendation and this one is Azure Advisor. And now comes question number 714. It says that you have completed the migration of your organization's core servers and the processes to the cloud-based virtual machines. Now your final project involves migrating a weekly batch processing task that relies on operating system drivers to print PDF reports and you need to meet this requirement while minimizing the cost. What should you do? So I hope you understood the requirement given here. The options given are run the batch processing task using spot instances. The option B is execute the batch task on a dedicated virtual machine as needed. Option C says configure virtual machine clusters to scale for batch processing. And last option is migrate the batch processing to the serverless compute. And the correct answer for this question is option A, run the batch processing task using spot instances. And I hope you have already noted in the question requirement that we are talking about weekly batch processing task. So that's why we have chosen the first option which talks about batch processing using spot instances. Why we are using spot instances to minimize the cost. And now comes question number 715. It says that your company deploys resources in Azure. According to the shared responsibility model, which task will you be required to perform? Your options are configure connectivity between regions. Option B is manage access to data centers resources. Option C says upgrade RAM on virtualization systems. And lastly, install critical updates on virtual machines. And the correct answer, my friends, for this question is option D, install critical updates on virtual machines. And all the other options will be taken care by Microsoft Azure. And now comes question number 716. It says Express Route is at which OSI layer? Your options are 2, 3, 5 or 7. And the correct answer for this question is option B. 3 OSI level. And now comes question number 716. It says Express Route is at which OSI layer? Your options are 2, 3, 5 or 7. And the correct answer is option B. So Express Route operates at OSI 3 layer. And very quickly my friends, I want to validate the answer as there are a lot of variations and lot of discussions around this question on the internet. So here is the correct answer. As I mentioned that Express Route operates at layer 3. So now you know that our answer is correct. But in case you want to learn more on Express Route, this is the documentation. Now let's jump on to the next very interesting question, question number 717. But before we jump on to the question itself, we have to read this statement. And the statement says that you work for a small company that hosts its own web server running Microsoft Internet Information Services and an email server running Microsoft Exchange. Now friends, as the demand on the web server increases, you want to add a secondary web server to spread out the traffic. And also remember the other aspect of it, that as the demand decreases, you want to decommission web server to save energy and maintainers. Now you consider moving the current infrastructure to cloud, so you need to determine the benefits of moving the infrastructure to the cloud. Now friends, there are multiple questions coming up based on this statement. So read this statement very carefully. Maybe you would like to pause the video and read it once again. But for now, let's read the question. The question says that you can use horizontal scaling for the web server. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question, my friends, is yes. So friends, you can use horizontal scaling for the web server with auto scale. You can configure rules that monitor metrics such as requests, memory usage and central processing unit percentage to determine when Azure should automatically remove or add virtual machine instances. So here comes another question based on the same statement. Question number 718 says that you can resize the disk on demand on mail server if email messages increases. Yes or no? And this one, my friends, is a true statement. That's why yes is the correct answer. So just so you know that you can resize the disk on demand on the mail server if the email messages increases. Azure is elastic and it allows you to add more resources on demand as needed. Let's take one more question on the same statement. It says that you can eliminate the cost of having IT staff. Yes or no? And the correct answer for this question is no. So basically, my friends, you do not have to eliminate the cost of having IT staff by moving the infrastructure to the cloud. However, you can reduce the IT cost associated with having expert IT staff. So what does that mean? Well, you still need IT staff to handle infrastructure as a service task, but probably they need not to be an expert level.
And now on your screen is question number 720. It says, which service lets you expand your on-premises networks into Microsoft Cloud over a private connection with the help of connectivity provider? Your options are Azure Network, Express Route, Azure VPN Network or Azure CDN. And the correct answer for this question is my friends, option B, Express Route. And you can use the same documentation that I referred just a few questions back to understand Azure Express Route. So thanks for joining me for today's Azure question and answer video. In case you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section. And friends, please hit that like button to make the Mr. YouTube happy and help us reach more wonderful audience just like you. And also press that subscribe button so that you are always on the top of your Azure learning. That's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.